Welcome to my review of the SH Monster Arts Godzilla Comic Con Explosion. This is the first variant figure in the line, and it is that of the original Godzilla. A lot of people own that particular release, so let's see if this orange variant has something new and exciting to offer to collectors. This Godzilla is a straight up variant of the original Monster Arts Godzilla. Sculpting detail is 100% identical. All of the details that you would expect to find on the original Godzilla, you will find on this guy. Except for one difference. You probably can't tell what it is. He's orange. Also, the plastic used for this particular release is a bit softer. I'll get to that later in the articulation section. Paint, surprisingly, there is some on this guy. You can see on the claws, there is a yellow paint. Even on the toes, on the dorsal plates. Also, something interesting about the actual sculpt, each segment, on mine at least, of the Comic-Con Explosion Godzilla's tail is molded in a slightly different color of orange compared to the next. So this one's a bit lighter, this one's darker, this one's lighter, this one's darker. Intentional or otherwise, that's pretty neat. There is some red on the tongue for Godzilla, and the eyes are a neon orange. Let's see if that will focus in. There we go. So overall, as a portrayal of Meltdown Godzilla, which I'm guessing this is what it's supposed to be, it's very nice. I like it a whole lot. Sculpt and paint, very, very cool for a figure of this nature. The articulation on this Godzilla is identical to that of the original Godzilla in terms of where joints are. However, the plastic used for this particular Godzilla is softer, and so there is a bit more give at some areas. So I'll start with the head, work down to the feet, and then go through the tail. So, like Godzilla, Comic-Con Goji's mouth is on a ball joint. The head is attached to the neck on a ball joint, and this is the first part where the softer plastic comes into play. The head can easily come off. But it has a much better range. And you can get them to look up more without having that neck bulge that I can't really get out of this one. As usual, base of the neck is on a ball joint. Shoulders are on a ball joint with a bicep swivel. And the cool part here is, of course, it's not going to show up that great on camera because of the lighting, but you can actually see the inner joints in the arms of Godzilla. But you can see the ball joint on the hands. And also the elbows are on a hinge. The waist area on Godzilla, the Comic-Con one, is... much better than the original release. You can get a lot of movement out of that. Which, I mean, really, you're not going to need that on Godzilla, but like I said, soft plastic does amazing, amazing things for Godzilla. Thighs, they're attached to the hips on a ball joint, and they have a much wider range of movement because even though they're still colliding with the sculpt, it's much easier to move through them. And you can get more articulation out of it. The knees are on a hinge. Feet are on ball joints. Tail. 
identical in terms of articulation. It doesn't gain anything due to the softer plastic, except for mine. The tip likes to pop off every once in a while. Of course, it's not going to do it now on camera, which is fine, but uh, I'll force it. So this is all one piece, except for the sculpt here. So overall, the articulation on a recast of Godzilla is actually much better than the original. Who'd have thunk? Comic Con Explosion Godzilla unfortunately comes with nothing. Bare bones release. What you see here is what you get. However, MSRP on this guy is $55, but that's the original SDCC price, so you're going to be paying a bit more. But given the initial MSRP, can't really complain considering the fact that Godzilla was $67.99. While it's said, Comic Con Explosion Godzilla comes with nothing, all of the beam effects and whatnot that work with all the other Godzillas work with this one. In terms of scale, literally, again, I don't know how many times I can repeat this, these two are identical. So all of the monsters that this Godzilla is in scale with, so is this one. And chances are, if you're thinking about getting this one, you probably own this one. So all of the matchups that would work for this Godzilla work for this one. No problems at all, which is pretty nice. So overall, Comic-Con Explosion Godzilla is nice. It's a nice little add-on to the rest of the SH Monster Arts line. By no means is it essential, but I think it's pretty neat. Especially when you have the other Heisei era Godzillas. This way you can have a different stage of meltdown. So definitely a novelty for some collectors. A lot of people are going to pass on it, but... Quite frankly, if I had a choice as to what Godzilla I would keep in my collection, it would have to be Burning Godzilla for a first, then the Comic-Con Explosion Goji, then the normal one. Even though this isn't the first attempt at a Meltdown Godzilla by Bandai, in terms of the broad spectrum, I like this one. It's very bright. And the plastic is completely translucent. So let's get the other two Godzillas out of here. And go ahead, turn the lights off. As I showed you in the introduction, that's all this is. It's just all a translucent plastic. And to go alongside this, my favorite thing, a laser pointer. Yeah, uh, it, it's sweet. It, it's, I guess you could say gimmicky. Some find it kind of pointless, but honestly, I see nothing wrong with it. If you can pick it up for cheap, I say go ahead and do it. Because without a doubt, this guy will brighten up your collection.